everybody. My name is Uguchi. And um, today I thought to share about my experience with finding a school for my kids in Lagos. And um, it could be relevant for anyone who is in Lagos, who is planning to move to Lagos, who is in any part of Nigeria or anywhere in the world generally. So what to look out for when you're looking for a school for your child. So for me, my priority at that time, okay, I had moved from a different part of Lagos to Magodo GRA. No, close to Magodo GRA, you could see. And um, I was looking for a school for my kids. I was told about so many schools, you know, they are expensive. They are for a certain class of people. And um, you could like those schools, but I had something in mind. I was looking for a school that had space. Space for my children to play and run around and be kids. That was what I was looking for. I remember growing up in Abba, uh, my school, International Early Learning Center. And um, that's a private school, but several other schools in Abba, including the government schools, they had a field, you know, field where kids could play football where they could run around and touch the soil and touch good bacteria and you know introduce it to their guts. That was what I wanted. And I noticed that um, with the introduction of private schools, you know, the spaces became smaller and smaller and smaller because so many people wanted to have a school. So you find out that kids stay in the same room. They eat there, they learn there, they play there. There is no space for them to run around and be kids. I remember the Finnish model, the Finland model of school, where kids um, are just allowed to be kids. I saw a video where, and it's among the, among the best in the world, if not the best in the world, where kids are allowed to just run around and play in nature and observe nature and interact with nature and explore. I really found that quite interesting. And they, um, so an American went to Finland and said he saw a kid climbing the tree and he asked, there's a kid up that tree. He said, uh, yeah, there's a kid up the tree. No, are you not concerned? I said, there's a kid up. He's going higher and higher. So yeah, he, he knows how to come down from the tree. And he was shocked. So that was what I wanted. I wanted my kids to run around. So I, I put down some points here. So, and of course, with obesity and junk food, children need space to play. They need space to exert all of that childhood energy. And that was more important than sports and <laughs> more important than science or English, or maths, or history, 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 <sighs> yeah. And then I also wanted them to play with natural, gla gra gra natural grass, no, not French, grass, natural, natural, natural grass, and not plastic grass, because that's what's popular in many schools. So you see plastic grass, which could be toxic, because it's plastic, uh, for the kids. And then, you know, sometimes they've sealed the floor. There's no soil. There's no natural grass. Everything is synthetic. I didn't want that. And so that was part of what I was looking for. And uh, I've mentioned that. And, um, you know, a school where the ground is natural. And also a school that wasn't very close to an industrial area. And, of course, I know there's a problem with that in Nigeria where every place has become an industrial area where mechanics are there and the the spray shops are there and they're emitting you know gas and chemicals under that goes underneath the soil it was important to me but some of those things they are so difficult to avoid and um, so i also considered that and finally i chose a school called t-tops free advert for t-tops <laughs> i loved t-tops because it's a huge school it reminded me of you know what schools used to be back then with so much space for kids to play. And then I, the Titos had a garden, an organic garden where they literally would plant food and vegetables and harvest them. So my kids were learning how to plant and harvest. And it was, I just loved it. And they were learning how to recycle. And thanks to all the schools who were part of that partnership, um, 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 partnership on teaching children how to recycle and do all of this. And so I, I wanted that for my kids. And yeah, so I think I'll advise you to look for a school that has space and where your kids can run around and play and exert energy and, um, you know, learn how to stronger, be stronger to exercise. Also, I don't know if you've thought about this. Where is the generator of your school or a child's school located? You might be surprised that your kid is literally in school for five, six, seven hours, depending on 
how many hours and then they're sitting they, this the window is just close to the the gener generator fume so the the fume that comes in you know the child spends so much time in that space the toxic space i had to check i asked them where is the generator when you go for pta meetings ask them where's the generator set how far is it from the school is it a meeting school is it properly serviced and sometimes they service them but you know sometimes the gas is orderless or um what's it called you can't see it and for that it could be very very difficult so you could buy a carbon monoxide monitor to ensure that where your child spends most of his time that's what school is safe for them the air is clean and they are protected so check that out also the school bus and they tell you oh our school bus has ac it's important but that's not the most important thing to check out does the school does the school bus emit smoke do they spend time in on that bus inhaling toxic air inhaling gas from the exhaust find out it's very important find out all of these and for example if there's flooding and your child is stuck on the bus and then you know you heard you've heard about what happens when children or people inhale carbon monoxide so ask those questions make sure that it's part of what you do during pta and don't just ask questions observe and see and when they know that you're going to you know check it out or observe they'll fix the things that needs to be fixed that's number two and number three i think that's about that okay about gardens and checking the schools i think that's why am i forgetting something so yeah so it's important that um uh, why they learn they also interact with nature and it, it makes them really smarter it makes them knowledgeable it makes them healthy you know so that's what i thought to share with you i'm bringing you more um tips and more stories around my experiences of my life and of course centered around the environment thank you so much for watching do subscribe Bye.